Hi, I'm Dr. Erin Hurley. I am a physician, pediatrician, and also a coach for women in medicine. I care a lot about people. I practiced medicine for 26 years. I started out as a babysitter and I taught swimming lessons to kids and gymnastics to kids. I was a lifeguard and have always been interested in science and also helping. So I started out uh, with a dream of becoming a veterinarian and then shifted that dream in undergrad to going into people medicine. And I just like to solve problems for people. I like to help make the world a better place. Sometimes that's just helping someone with their luggage at the airport. And sometimes that's making a commitment to a volunteer or a philanthropic agency. So I originally started out wanting to be a veterinarian because my older brother, we were like this, and he wanted to be a veterinarian. So that was when I was in third or fourth grade. And I continued to want to go into veterinary school until I was a freshman in college. And then I had this realization, I'm really good with people. I've been working with children all my life. And I then had a passion to go into medical school and become a pediatrician. And I like to, help people re remember that sometimes what they see seems like all they see is the success. And one of the things for me is that my success is built on failures. For example, when I was in medical school or in undergrad, I was in a very competitive pre-med program and I was told by the pre-med advisor, you will never make the final cut in our program. They took 350 students and whittled it down to 24 by the end of our junior year. And then those elite 24 were fast tracked to start medical school at UCLA as, uh, as their senior year in college. And so she said, not only will you not make that cut, don't bother applying to medical school. We don't want people like, or they don't want people like you. And so luckily I'm a good problem solver and when people tell me no and I don't think that's the right answer, I'm really good about finding alternative solutions. And it just so happened that my sister was dating a medical student. He lived an hour away from me and he became my pre-med advisor. So I chose who to listen to. I never met with that pre-med advisor again as the so-called expert for me. And instead I chose somebody who believed in me and he mentored me throughout undergrad helped tell me what classes to take, helped me know what I needed to do to successfully get into medical school. I was a good student, usually an honor roll student, but not straight A. And um, he had the right advice and helped me successfully get into medicine. So I started out, I was born and raised in California and did undergrad at UC Riverside in Southern California. And then I took a gap year before it was popular to take a gap year. And I took music and art classes at the local JC and worked and traveled. And then I started medical school in Omaha, Nebraska at Creighton University and had a wonderful four years there, met lifelong friends and was just was blown away by just how nice everyone was. I didn't know anyone in Omaha, Nebraska. And when I moved there, people were saying hello and waving. And I thought, this is interesting. I wasn't used to that from where I had moved from Southern California. So that was really, uh, really a great experience. And then I matched for my pediatric residency for the first year up at OHSU in Portland, Oregon. So that was my first taste of living in Oregon. And then I chose to actually transition or change programs and I finished up my pediatric residency back in the Midwest in Iowa, Iowa City, Iowa. And then after that, I then went, came back to Oregon for my first medical practice and I've been here ever since, since 1997. I have my, my family and raising my kids here. I now rent an office space downtown. I've practiced medicine in a few different areas in Salem. And it's a community that not only has great programs for our students, but it also has some really great programs for entrepreneurs. The woman who owns my co-working space and that I rent my space from, she has an amazing group for entrepreneurial women. She's introduced me to other women who support other women in businesses. And I love that even though Salem is a fairly large city, it feels small. So I love that growing camaraderie and spirit of kind of a small town feel in our town and just that pride in helping each other succeed 
just and, and very welcoming. Just makes me really proud to be part of this community. I have been, I, I officially retired from medicine about six months ago, and now what I do is I coach and I support wellness and healthcare providers and especially women. So I've done a ton of research in what's going on, what are things, how are things different now than they were five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and medicine has changed so much. Number one, there's more women going into medicine, and I believe we have more women than men in medical school now, and women do medicine differently. To share some stats, women spend about one and a half times as long charting in the electronic health record than men. Women spend about two and a half minutes longer with each patient than the men do, and when you're looking at 10 and 20 minute slots for patient care, that's a big percentage. And when you add up that extra time at the end of the week, at the end of the year, that's hundreds of hours. And not only that, it's usually unreimbursed time. So then that also adds to the wage gap that women are, have in medicine as well as other um, fields as well. Women still, even if they're a physician or a woman working in healthcare, they are also still taking on more of the household and childcare duties. So when I look about what are all of the extra barriers women are taking on, whether it's as a healthcare provider or in their household, it's, it's exponential. And so when we look at things like burnout, depression, anxiety, the numbers are skewed and the women are struggling more. Um, I, there's one good benefit and women healthcare providers often actually get better outcomes for their patients. And maybe that's because we do medicine a little differently. And with so many women in healthcare, the culture hasn't changed. To support moms being a physician or a healthcare provider. And so I, my hope is, is that with more women in medicine, with war, more women in medicine taking on leadership roles and figuring out how to do well, taking care of their patients, helping with administrative things, taking good care of their families, that the culture might shift to be more inviting, not just for women in medicine, but for the men who are struggling as well. So I participate in the local Marion Polk County Medical Society Board. I've been a board member, I think going on 11 years. And when I became the president of that society back in 2018, as the president, I decided I wanted to add some focus on wellness. And so that allowed more of wellness infused activities into the organization. And I love that the board continues to embrace that and supports things like the, the free workshops that I offer to support wellness for healthcare providers and talking about wellness. I write for their quarterly chart notes publication. I write the wellness article most of the publications and really encouraging more clinicians to think about wellness and again, supporting some of the different activities and looking for activities to social activities to do something physically demanding, activities that are going to help support the healthcare providers in ways that are relevant to the healthcare providers now, which may be different than what was relevant five years or 10 years ago. Another organization that I'm on the executive committee for is called the Oregon Wellness Program. And that program was started in 2018, and it basically helps remove one of the barriers to seeking mental health support for healthcare providers. And it provides confidential free counseling in real time within three days of the referral. It started out with physicians, added nurse practitioners and physicians assistants, dentists, and now actually covers nurses as well. And I'm so proud of this organization and the steps they've made to make it so we can talk about some of the mental health burdens as healthcare providers and provide a different way of seeking services that feels comfortable enough for the clinicians to take that leap of faith that they're gonna get the help that they may need. For the first 20 years of my career, I don't think I did a great job. I did it in the traditional way, just 
you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, just push through, do the work, no matter how much of a struggle. I remember one time I tended to be very busy when I was on call, getting called in multiple times, getting really complicated patients admitted on my shift. And I remember one time getting up in the middle of the night, being called in, and I was just exhausted. So I went in to get dressed, and I literally crawled into a fetal position on the floor of my closet, knowing I wouldn't fall asleep in that position, but I just didn't want to move for another five minutes. Just give me five more minutes of rest, and then I'll go in and take care of this patient. So I didn't do a lot of healthy practices. I just pushed through, and it wasn't very healthy. I'm actually a cancer survivor, and I'm sure the stress that I took on as a healthcare provider and as a member of my family and a parent uh, didn't didn't help because I wasn't managing it in very healthy manners. Thankfully, I started working with a coach about six years ago, and that was totally game-changing, and that's one of the reasons I became a coach for women in medicine, because I saw that it took me from a state of, of feeling like a victim in my own life, where I don't, you know, I work so hard, people don't appreciate me, and I was successful. I was a leader in my organization. I did a really good job. My patients always loved me, but it came at a cost. And so by working with my coach, I realized I have more agency and more power than I think. So Happy Healthy Healer is a program that I developed for my company, Transformational Doc. And as I said before, I have fully retired from medicine, but I am providing wellness support for mostly focused on women in medicine, although the same advice would pertain to men as well. And so what I've done is over the last six years, working with my own coach, I've done hundreds of hours of personal growth and personal development, taken a ton of courses, gone to conferences, and learned from a lot of experts about how can we work smarter, not harder. Read the research on how does our brain work in this? How do we get into flow state? How can we work, you know, get more done in fewer hours spent? And then I basically boiled it down and said, what's appropriate, what's pertinent to healthcare providers, especially mostly busy working women moms in healthcare, many of the women I work with are leaders in medicine, what's pertinent to them, and whittled it down to pair what that advice is, what are the books that might help them, what are the programs that might help, pairing it with a high performance um, coaching program that then helps them advocate better for themselves, helps them raise awareness, helps them boost their moods, boost their energy, and then helps them connect better with their relationships, whether that's with their partner or spouse or their children. And if you're successful at your career and you get a divorce because of ignoring your relationship or you're estranged from your children, that's not really full success. And so it really looks at the whole picture and helping them focus not just on work-related success, but self-care related success and success in their relationships and giving, as a coach, giving an outsider's perspective, giving some challenge and push to say, let's dig a little deeper here. What do you think is behind that? So really looking at learning that I was struggling with things that I thought were me issues and as I'm working with other women in medicine, I realize how prevalent the issues I had are. I love working with my coaching clients and the women who come to my workshops and my retreat. They are some of the best people in the world. And again, it's such an honor for them to trust that I might have some advice that can help them. Trust to be able to share not only their wins, but their hardships. And that we can then work together on this journey of let's, let's get to a new place 60 days from now. Let's get to a new place 90 days from now. I, I believe in you. It is just, it brings me so much joy and energy and actually hope that what if, because right now I didn't talk about it either, but there's a big exodus of healthcare providers right now from physicians to nurses and support staff. It's just so tough, but I think, what if I can help that clinician stay in their practice because they want to stay working in medicine for another five years, another 10 years? Imagine that positive ripple effect.
Different people experience burnout in different ways. So some people might feel that they're being underutilized, like they've got all the skill set and their work isn't using them up to their full potential. Um, the most common form of burnout is just feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, somewhat disconnected. So maybe you don't care as much about your patient or you're not caring as much about your documentation. You might find that you're extracting yourself instead of, oh, there's a social gathering, everybody's meeting for lunch, you might choose to isolate. And so it can show up differently and there can be overlapping signs between burnout, things like anxiety and depression. And so just having an awareness, am I, am I me? Who am I turning into? Finding trusted members of your family or trusted colleagues or friends that you can check into and bounce ideas off of. Unfortunately, in medicine, we are trained to be a silo and fix problems on your own. Some physicians I work with think that they show weakness when they are stumbled by or you know, stumped by a patient and they want to get somebody else's opinion. And I'm like, that's not a weakness, that's a strength. Your patient needs you to bounce those ideas off of others to make sure you're giving the best care. But oftentimes we try to solve those problems on our own and it's not really healthy. So just paying attention, how am I showing up? Where's my energy level? And when I query, because part of my program asks, what are your levels in clarity? What are your levels in energy? And then levels in energy sometimes are rated at three out of a scale of one to 10. Their energy levels are in the toilet, and yet they're getting up and doing 24, 48 hour call shifts, working 12, 15 hour days with an energy level of a three or a four. Those are some of the circumstances they're working with. So sometimes we can be blinded by, this is just always the way I feel. I never get my energy above a three. I don't even know what that feels like. And so one of the things I like to do is raise awareness. Until I started working with a coach, I didn't realize how low my energy was. I didn't realize how poor my boundaries were. And so when we can start having conversations about how are you doing? What are you doing for your self-care? And talking about, I'm meditating. I'm sleeping, I'm exercising. Would you like to join me? Then we can start having some open conversations and helping it become more normal to talk about. Not only, hey, I just did this great surgery case and my patient had a great outcome and I saw all these kids and did you know 25 visits in one day's session. Can we stop kind of having a badge of honor and working so hard and say, oh my gosh, I got eight hours of sleep last night. I feel like a million bucks. And to share a personal story, my youngest was hospitalized when he was four with a serious health condition, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So after a 10 day illness, he was hospitalized. And even though I took the days off of work and my husband and I were physically present with him, when he was sleeping or otherwise didn't need me, I was actually charting on my patients from his hospital room. And when I think back about that time, I didn't think I had another choice. I didn't think I could put those boundaries. And I realized that not only was that negative for my relationship and for the support my son and my husband needed during that very critical time, but it was also not giving me healthy boundaries when I was interacting with my patients. And so if I can stop another mom from feeling like she has to chart or being pulled away from her child when her child's in the ER or hospitalized. From, save her from that pain of making that choice because you don't think there is a different way to do it. That's a big motivator for me is, what are the mistakes I made? How could I have been a better parent and be a great physician? And how can I share those learnings with others so that they don't have to have as many painful transitions and, and painful points in their life? Learn from my mistakes, don't repeat them. There are so many positive things and joys that come from being a healthcare provider. I have so many amazing families that I got to interact with that 
has just added so much and I've learned so much from the families that I worked with. I've learned so much from the parents by listening to them and then being willing to share their stories and learning from my failures. And so it's just such an honor to be in that situation, to be able to help shepherd people through the joys of their lives and their children's health in the tough times. So I don't have any regrets going into medicine. It's been such a fulfilling career. And being able to work with other women in medicine and be able to experience the wins that they have and the positive ripple effect that they're having. And when they show up even better than they were before, even if they were a great clinician and now they have that much more energy, that much more spunk, or they're that much better connected, not just with their patients, but with their own children. That is just, it's magical.